tonight. When we first heard the news that the Trump administration was planning on using Fort Sill in Oklahoma as a new child detention center, we knew that we could not stay silent. For those of you who may be unfamiliar with its history, Fort Sill played an important role in the impression, or oppression, imprisonment, and removal of many Native American tribes in the Midwest during the 1800s. During World War II, Fort Sill was one of the many uh, was one of the 63 camps, prisons, and assembly centers that was used to unjustly incarcerate persons of Japanese ancestry. By spring of 1942, approximately 700 Issei, or first-generation Japanese immigrants, were being held at the fort. Tonight, we are joined by many members of the Japantown community, as well as numerous organizations and individuals stand in solidarity with those who seek asylum, as well as the families who have been torn apart and the children that have been separated from their parents. We stand with those who have suffered and those who continue to suffer as, as they struggle for the opportunity for a better life. We stand to ensure that we do not continue to repeat mistakes of the past. For our, for our first speaker, I'd like to introduce Alice Ikido of the San Jose Nike Resistors. Many of us who experienced uh, incarceration during World War II admit to being silent about what happened to us, not sharing it with our children or with friends outside of the Japanese community. I was never sure of where that silence came from, but it is important to open that silence and support others who need our solidarity with them at this time. So let our rally call be, never again is now. All right, and with that, I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Tom Oshidari, who is the co-president of the San Jose JACL. Thank you. Now, I'm Tom Oshidari, co-president of San Jose JCL. I was born in Rower, Arkansas, which is one of the 10 concentration camps for Japanese Americans during World War II. Both my parents were American citizens, born and raised in the U.S. They were incarcerated after being removed from their home in Stockton, California. And while we were able to be, uh, we were able to remain together as a family, still we were unjustly incarcerated and arguably part of one of the worst violations of the Constitution in U.S. history. And yet, today we're seeing some things that are comparably as bad when we hear about children being separated from their families and possibly being detained in federal facilities, such as Fort Sill. And as we've heard, Fort Sill has a dark history, uh, in particular with the indigenous Americans and with Japanese Americans among their victims in the past. In the first three months of this year, over 40,000 children have came across the border and put into custody somewhere. Where are our children? We want them back. And we need to raise our voices in solidarity. We need to let them know it begins right here, right now with all of us. Yes. I'm so proud to be here and stand in solidarity with the Japanese American community. And I'm so honored to be invited to come here and speak on this microphone in behalf of our children, all of our children. You know, stand up, fight back! What do we do when our children are being attacked? Stand up, fight back! What do we do when our children are being attacked? Stand up, fight back! Good evening, everybody. I am incredibly elated to be here and to see such a massive crowd to share in such a tragic cause. Uh, before I begin, I do want to acknowledge that I stand here as a guest on the land of the Muwakmo Ohlone tribe. 44 years ago, 
The fall of Saigon marked the exodus of Vietnamese from their homes. People like my uncles, who served and fought in the war, fled to escape oppression and retaliation. 39 years ago, my father fled Vietnam to get away from the oppression that the government may inflict on him. He stepped in a little rickety boat, found himself into a shipping lane, got into a shipping the boat, which took him to uh, Hong Kong. But we have a chance. You know who doesn't get a chance? Alan Curdy, the Syrian boy who drowned in the Mediterranean his family was trying to find refuge. You know who doesn't get a chance? Oscar and Valeria Martinez, Salvadorian migrants who themselves were looking for a future and for security and for our home. You know who else doesn't have a chance? All of those children separated from their parents at our border. The children who may now be shipped off to Fort Sill, another place where we are being told that they'll be cared for, but as we have seen, we can't do any of that. But never again is now. And we will ensure that this does not happen by doing what you are tonight, showing your strength, showing your solidarity, and we will make known that we will not tolerate this kind of treatment. Thank you. introduce Ash Colra, who represents the 27th Assembly District, which encompasses, encompasses downtown San Jose, East San Jose, Evergreen, and parts of South San Jose. And I might add, represents Japantown. <laughs> I, I feel really blessed to be here because we have such a loving community. And I want to thank our Japanese American community for once again standing up and speaking up when other communities are, are facing oppression and having their civil rights stripped away. Uh, I, yeah, you have lived up to that model. Never forget. All right, and our next speaker is Carrie Duncan. Carrie is a congressional assistant to Representative Zoe Lofgren, who represents the 19th California District. Thank you for having me here today. While the House of Representatives was in session today, the Congresswoman wanted to make sure that I was here and to share a few words. Our next speaker is Andrew Nguyen. Andrew is a community organizer at Viet Unity South Bay, where he advocates for immigrant and refugee rights for the Southeast Asian community. Hello. Uh, my name is Andrew Nguyen. Um, I want to thank the San Jose Nuclear Sisters and Japanese American community for sharing this space for me to speak. Um, I'll just hold this. I'm an organizer with Unity South Bay, and in the past year since I've been involved in community organizing, I've had my heart broken and healed, my resolve tested and hardened. You see, despite being a tech worker, I also work with and accompany Vietnamese families in their fight against deportation and family separation. In accompaniment, we help impacted community members take power in their stories and ownership of their mistakes as youth in the school to prison pipeline. And as we teach our youth, these mistakes are the fertile ground from which our formerly incarcerated community members learn the resilience needed to overcome adversity and use their power to speak out to change a broken system. ICE has been devastating Cambodian, Lao, and Vietnamese communities quietly for years because of the model minority lie and the shame of incarceration in our Asian communities. The cries of our Southeast Asian children when family separation happens and the voices of our people are almost never heard. But while I advocate and organize with the Southeast Asian community, I'm here today because my personal values of love and justice has brought me here in solidarity against migrant detention. The Unity South Bay stands with the Japanese American community in San Jose to call the Department of Health and Health Services against reusing Fort Sill as a home for suffering. My heart is filled with hope in seeing so many community members here today in solidarity. We're not free until we're all free. Thank you. It has created an atmosphere where white supremacists has been given free reign to attack and to dehumanize people, to cause us to live in fear, 
is created an atmosphere where people are pitted against each other for for where they come from, their their beliefs in God, whatever God, or if they don't believe in God. We are the microphone to let people know it is not them. It's the white supremacist society that has caused the situation. And it's up to us and the microphone to empower people to make a better future. Susan Hayasa, the co-founder of the San Jose DK Resistors. <laughs> Good evening. Thank you so much for coming. Um, it's so wonderful to see this incredible array of people. And I know many of you have been uh, struggling uh, on the side of justice for decades. So I, I salute you. But I have a, this evening, I have a message for Japanese Americans, for the Nikkei people here tonight. You know, we've been comparing um, 1942 and today uh, for some time um, and because the parallels are striking. And to our horror and alarm, we've seen these parallels along with many, many others. But for Japanese Americans, ourselves, the comparisons between then and now is a sharp contrast, not a parallel. In 1942, with our forced removal and indefinite detention in more than 60 different civilian and military concentration camps or prisons, our community institutions and our family relationships were damaged. But worst of all, the government worked to destroy us in the camps by turning us against each other. They used young, naive Nisei as their proxies in the camps and convinced some of us to promote the government's program of acquiescence. Some of us alternatively resisted at great cost, and the bitter conflict caused huge fissures between us. The government said that it was our failure to assimilate that was to blame for our imprisonment. They pitted us against each other as those espousing the obligations of citizenship versus those who said it was patriotic to resist. Those fissures did not disappear when we were released. They were passed down. Yet today, in 2019, in our ad hoc committee, we have both the Japanese American Citizens League and the San Jose Nikkei Resistors working together. So that's a victory. In 1942, hardly anyone came to our defense. Hardly anybody cared that individual due process for persons of Japanese ancestry was flushed down the toilet. But today, 75 years later, I find that I'm living in a county where my neighbors care enough to organize day and night to win individual due process rights for everybody, regardless of race, citizenship, religion, or ancestry. I find I'm living in a county where so many people are standing up against fear mongering. They reject it. You reject it. I find that I'm living in a county where the elected officials are willing to stick their necks out in defense of the Bill of Rights and in defense of a strong sanctuary policy. They voted for it five to zero and we should cheer them. Japanese Americans, Buddha heads and Katonks, we are ready to repudiate the fractures and divisions of the past. We're ready to unite and mobilize our community to work with each other so that we can all stand up and take our place among those in the broader community who have also changed since 1942. So, never again is now. 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 And please join us. Excuse me. Please pick up a flyer that has our legislative campaign. We want to pass those bills and more. 
So uh, sign up and uh, join us. We want to move past this. We want to take the next step. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Um, we will now be transitioning to the visual part of tonight's program. Um, if you have a light or a candle, it looks like some of you guys do, now would be the time to bring it out or turn it on and light it. This event was intended not only as a reminder and a call to action, but an opportunity for reflection, for empathy, and remembrance. We remember the Chiricahua and Fort Hill Apache tribes, as well as all of the other Native American tribes, who were incarcerated in and around Fort Sill in the final chapters of the removal, relocation, and genocide against Native American tribes in the West. <laughs> we remember Kanesaburo Oshima, an Issei man from Hawaii and father of 11, who was killed while imprisoned at Fort Sill in 1942. We remember Oscar Alberto Mar Martinez Ramirez and his two-year-old daughter Valeria, who perished earlier this week while trying to seek asylum at the border. And finally, we remember and stand uh, with all of the children, the parents, the mothers and the fathers, the friends, the families, the immigrants and the asylum seekers who continue to face incarceration. It's our job to break down walls. Stalling systems of oppression, greed and money, their obsession. It's time to teach them a lesson. Love and unity promotes connection. <laughs> Part of the Japanese American community, I have always said, never again. Never again, never again will we be a part of the inhumane internment, inhumane incarceration of human beings. Now, I must say that in some ways, I thought that was a little bit ridiculous to say because we're in the United States of America, for goodness sakes, where that kind of thing does not happen again, it should not happen again, will not happen again, and it is happening again. And I must tell you, I am, I am incensed. I am, I am out of breath. I am sad, I am disappointed. Okay, I'm angry. And I am in need of you. And you. And you. All of us. I am in need of community. I am in need of holy, productive moments as this tonight. Would you? I invite you to take a look around at those who have gathered here. I invite you to, to feel the enormity of those who have gathered here tonight. And amidst, let us go forth and be active. Amidst, let us go forth and represent. Amidst, let us go forth in productive and holy moments. Amen. Amen. And now I'd like to invite uh, Reverend Sakamoto of the San Jose Buddhist Church, who has some closing words for us and will lead us in a moment of silence. The incarceration of any child anywhere is not reasonable. Yet the incarceration and separation of children is a common practice. According to the ACLU, on any given day, nearly 60,000 youth under the age of 18 are incarcerated in juvenile jails and prisons in the United States. 
The incarceration of children at Fort Sill is especially egregious because of the indifference to history. That indifference fails to acknowledge the other's humanity. We need to work at that indifference. That indifference allows poverty and exploitation to flourish. We need to be better at caring for one another. We can be better. We must acknowledge the differences that make us distinct, but at the same time embrace the humanity that we all share. May the wisdom of the all-compassionate one so shine within our hearts and minds that the mists of error and the foolish vanity of self may be dispelled. So shall we understand the changing nature of existence and reach spiritual peace. As we bring this gathering to a close, will you please join in a moment of quiet meditation. May all beings be happy. May they be joyous and live in safety. Thank you. Uh, I'd also like to thank not only all of our speakers for helping put this on, but also to all of you for attending, for standing with us, for fighting, and inspiring everyone else. Um, just before you leave, please make sure that if you borrowed any of the lights, to return them. <laughs> we borrowed them from somewhere else. And them. But again, thank you very much for coming, and everyone have a good night. <laughs>